Good afternoon, everyone. So I want to talk in this video about a mindset that, I don't know, one of the most dangerous mindsets out there. Well, I don't know. There are a lot of competitors for that. But one of the ones that's most annoying for me. Uh, I'll tell you this. Um, in my time doing videos on YouTube, I get this kind of comment all the time. I don't know why. Well, actually, I do know why I get it. I'll tell you why. But here, here's how it goes. Um, I will put, let's say I put up a tutorial on something, okay? Let's say it's a tutorial about how to do references automatically in LaTeX, okay? You can set up a, a bibliography file, and once you do that, you will never have to do references. It'll do it automatically. It'll even format them in APA or MLA, whatever you want, automatically. Wow, fantastic, okay? So I've done videos on stuff like that. And here's the kind of comment I'll get, okay? People will say, okay, that's more effective, but, what you don't understand, Luke, is that my time, you know, I am just too busy and important to learn how to do things effectively. So this doesn't matter for me. Okay, now that's a, a weird comment for me to get. First off, I mean, this is a tutorial about LaTeX. Why, well, you know, why are you, why are you literally just coming here to learn about it and tell people why you shouldn't or something like that? I mean, the, po the point here is me facilitating you learning something. Uh, but more importantly, here's, here's my theory. Um, there are people out there who are psychologically incapable of learning anything or developing at all because there's a kind of arrogance in them. And the arrogance goes something like this. If I learn something or if I see something done that I don't know how to do, uh, if I admit to myself that that is useful, it is admitting that I do not know everything or that, you know, admitting not that I was wrong, but that I don't have all the answers. Okay, that, that's how I'm convinced that how, you know, a lot of people think about things like this. Now, let me give, uh, now, one of the reasons I'm doing this video, I should say, is I remember being directed to a video on YouTube. I'm not going to tell you exactly which one it is, but some of you will be able to guess. And it was uh, by a guy who I think was walking around, not unlike uh, I am right now. And he was a software developer, or at least a former software developer. And he was talking about why he doesn't use Linux. Now, I am not a big Linux evangelist. I use Linux. I'm not going to use, I mean, I'm never going to go back to Windows or Mac OS or something like that. Uh, but I'm not big into Linux evangelism I, uh, at all. I mean, if you watch my videos, you probably know that. Um, but here, here's my perspective. Okay, what, the, what this guy said was... Um, Oh, well, I would use Linux, but Linux, here's the phrase, Linux is only free if your time isn't worth anything. Uh, it's really a big pain to learn how to do everything, and, uh, you know, it's a struggle, and basically he admitted to not knowing how to work a desktop environment, and his only experience with Linux was basically SSHing into an Apache web server or something like that, which, you know, if that's what you think Linux is, I can understand uh, why you don't, uh, you think it's a meme for people to use it. Um, but let me, let me give you a little parable, a little metaphor, okay, Th that shows you why this is particularly stupid for someone like that to say. Uh, imagine you had a friend who talked about, who would not stop talking about how much he loved cars, okay? He loves cars, talks about them all the time, talks about the different types, the different brands, talks about engines, all the things that could be wrong with them, stuff like that. He'll try and diagnose from afar what he thinks is wrong with your car. And he maybe he even works for a garage, you, you hear, and he goes off, does his job, comes back. Uh, and then one day, his uh, oil needs changing. And he says so, I need to get my oil changed. And he, but he decides, okay, instead of changing it myself, I'm gonna go pay for it. I'm gonna pay 50 bucks to go get it changed. You would probably be a little confused. You probably might say, wait, why don't you just change it yourself? It's an easy enough pro uh, you know, process. Anyone could do it. I mean, even if you're replacing the filter, it's not a difficult thing to do. What if he reacted saying, whoa, ho, ho, whoa, no. I am far too busy and important to actually know how to do that. I, I'm sorry, I'm optimizing uh, for my time. Um, so I have not learned how to do this basic thing that everyone, you know, people who you would think I'd be like would know how to do. I don't know how to do that because I'm just too, I'm busy doing more important things, okay? This, for whatever reason, people in technology say all the time. They will say stuff. You will say, uh, oh, here's how you could um, call this function more effectively. Here's how you could, uh, you could make your code more efficient. And time and time again, especially in software, I mean, you could, there are other domains where people do this as well, but especially in software, there's just this mindset where if you 
even tell anyone how to make how to do something more effectively where it is nothing for them but gain they will react in the most egocentric way of oh, how dare you correct me i in the rationalization is always this i'm economizing for uh you know development time oh maybe it runs a little slower but you know development time is just as important if it's easier for me to write then that means that you know i'm saving time now in software especially that's a terrible argument because you know, let's say you make code a little bit, you know, let's say you spend 10 extra hours on some uh, script that makes it, you know, half a second more efficient, okay? That might sound like a huge waste of your time, but in terms of software quality, if your script is being run uh, a dozen, a hundred, a thousand, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, I mean, if it's, it's, if it's well-used software, it's going to be run millions maybe billions of times and yes microseconds make a different make a difference at that scale so especially if you're a software developer you have an obligation now no one's going to come to your house with a gun and tell you you have to do this but you know one of the reasons that people complain about code being you know everything is bloated nowadays everything's inefficient is because a lot of people just don't have this sense of optimization now the other thing that's weird about this is if Let's go back to that hypothetical video I was talking about a second ago. If you are someone who openly identifies as a computer person, someone who programs, someone who uh, loves computers and stuff like that, um, I, I'm confused why you would have the reaction of, oh, I don't want to learn how to use Linux or, I don't know, Vim. Uh, that's another one. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. The, the amount of it. I'm sorry. It takes an afternoon to learn Vim. It takes a week to get good at it. It is it's one of the few things that will make your life so much easier if you just learn it. But again, there are so many people who will rationalize why they are just too smart, too good, too efficient to actually learn how to use these more or less basic tools. Um, and so this is this is the thing that's so confusing to me, I guess. Uh, I'm, but again, I think it's it's something that's more based in people don't want to admit that they don't know something. So they their first reaction is to shoot it down. And mind you, I have had to... Uh, you know, sometimes I'll have temptation to do something like that. For example, one piece of software that I've never really used, I've never really gotten into, is Emacs, okay? Uh, Emacs, you can do lots of great things in it. Uh, I'm familiar with a lot of the things you do, uh, but for different reasons, uh, you know, I've never used Emacs. But I think when I was first exposed to it, I too had that, uh, that desire to shoot it down and say, oh, it's just a big time sink or something like that. Now, here's the, here's the I don't know, the punchline, I guess, um, because, again, I get a lot of people who, on one hand, will say, oh, it's a big waste of my time for me to, let's say, learn Vim or uh, install Arch Linux or something like that. They'll say, oh, it's a big waste of my time. And then, on the other hand, the same people will say, hey, how do I learn how to be good at computers? How do I learn how to become, you know, write good scripts or, you know, learn how this works on my Linux desktop or how, how to write good Unix system tools well, stuff like that. And the thing is, they are both perfectly aligned. Uh, if you are a well-adjusted person who's involved with computers, you're going to want to experiment things which are quote-unquote time wastes. Oh, I'm going to install Arch Linux. Yes, I could install Manjaro, which basically is Arch Linux that auto-installs more or less. Um, but in the process of doing something like installing Arch Linux or doing something that might seem, I don't know, like a quote unquote waste of time, that is exactly where you learn how to actually do this stuff well. Um, you don't learn how to do things well from just watching someone teach you how to do it, even on YouTube, even in my tutorial videos. I have no illusion that the goal of my tutorial videos uh, is not to teach people things, but to pique their interest so they can experiment with their own things and learn how to do that. I cannot teach you how to use Vim. You have to be able to, uh, you know, go out there and experiment with it. But instead, there are these people who insist they have this arrogant reaction wherever they are exposed to something that they don't know about. They just want to shoot it down. They want to rationalize why they don't, why they don't have to learn it and they're just too important not to, okay? And aside from that, so the one point, yes, this is exactly where you learn things, experimenting with things, which sometimes might seem as a waste of time to learn how to program, uh, to learn how to set up a Linux desktop or something. But you, that is where you actually learn how to do things more effectively. It doesn't seem like that, but that is exactly where you learn. And 
uh, another point, the other point that I will say is, I'm sorry, you do have enough time. You absolutely do have enough time. Just let me, I know that you guys like to believe that you know a lot about my life, but let me tell you about uh, where I was, let's say a year ago, okay? A year ago, uh, February of last year, uh, let me tell you what my time looked like. First off, I put out a video about every single day at this period, but YouTube was not my full-time job. I actually had several full-time jobs. Uh, I graded papers for my university, that was a job, and I also worked as a carpenter, full-time, 40 hours a week, uh, that is what I did. I wanted to learn carpentry, so I was working for a friend. So I did that, I graded papers, I put out videos on my YouTube channel, and I still went to church three, actually four times a week. I still had a normal social life, uh, I still, I cooked all my own food, I still had enough time for that, and that was a period in my life where I was learning how to use a lot of suckless software specifically D-Menu, or not D-Menu, uh, DWM. I already knew, knew how to use D-Menu. It's the easiest thing in the world, but uh, that's when I started using DWM. Um, so I know there's this cope that people have that, oh, I'm just, I'm just too busy, I'm just too important, I don't have enough time to actually learn how to do the things that I pretend to care about, but you do have enough time. Just stop, just stop watching Netflix and porn and playing video games and you're gonna have enough time frankly, okay All right, I'll make an exception if you're married, you know, I don't know women so Sometimes they take up a, a good bit of time But if especially if you're a single person uh, frankly even if you're married you have enough time I mean I I have married friends who do the same kind of stuff that I do uh, and they have plenty of time um, so Anyway, that, that's that's just it. Whenever you see yourself, and this is the lesson not just for you, but for me, as I've said, I've been tempted to have this reaction before. Um, if you are ever tempted to shoot someone down for what they're doing, telling them that, explaining to them, this is the absurd arrogance of it, explaining to them why what they're doing is a waste of their time, as if they, they don't have a better assessment of what their time is worth than you are, uh, than you have. Um, whenever you have that, that tendency to do it, check yourself. Because really what you're probably trying to do is rationalize the fact that you don't know what you're doing. You, you, the onus is on you to actually learn. And yes, as I said, I think I said a second ago about Emacs, there are some things, I, I had the tendency to want to shoot down the idea of learning Emacs, and you know what, I, I experimented with Emacs, it wasn't for me, but I can definitely understand why someone else might enjoy liking it, uh, or, or really have a much more efficient workflow in it. So anyway, that's about it. Just check yourself, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Don't, uh, I said something in the last video that was like, uh, don't, don't knock it if you haven't tried it, something like that. Whatever, who cares? All right, see you guys next time.